So I've titled the message this morning, Don't Stop Believing, Keep Praying. Keep Praying. And so Luke 18 verses 1 to 8. Um, about a couple summers ago, maybe two, I remember my aunt came to town from New York and she was visiting the family for the summer and she was staying at different people's places and that was nice. And then Saturday came and Saturday was the day where she needed to get to the bus terminal uh, to get back to New York. How many have used the bus terminal here in Toronto? Some of you have used it and some of us use the bus terminal, some of us fly. And so it was a Saturday night that she needed to get to the bus terminal and we needed to drive downtown because as you know, the bus terminal is downtown. I believe her bus was leaving at 7.30 and so we left a good time. I was taking her to the bus terminal. We left a good time to get down there. But as you know, this was the summertime. Traffic downtown is just terrible okay it is just terrible and so i you know i pray for those of you who have to go down there to, for work it's it's a lot of a lot of energy anyways we we finally get up get off and we're on the lake lake shore road and i needed to get to 81 bay street because that's what the gps said was the bus terminal and that that is where the new bus terminal is by the way it's been moved and so i had never dropped anybody off at the bus terminal this was new for me so when we get to the location i see a big building that says cibc cibc square but i don't see buses and i don't see um like post anywhere so i was like well where is the bus terminal the gps says i'm here but i don't see any buses and so uh, you, as you know, you can't just stop in the middle of downtown. You have to keep going. So we had to circle around, which talked, which gave another extra 10 to 15 minutes. And so we were, we were running out of time in terms of getting to the bus terminal safe. And so I said, you know what? Maybe we just need to park and then just walk in. So we tried to get into one parking lot, but the parking lot was full, so I had to come out. And so the entire situation downtown was chaotic because they also had a Blue Jay game going on and there was a concert going on at the Rogers Center. And so as you can imagine, it was super busy and super uh, chaotic. So now I'm getting nervous because I'm thinking, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out. We are running out of time. And so I didn't wanna ask my aunt to just get out of the car, take your luggage and figure it out because I'm not that kind of person. And it was, you know, downtown. She doesn't know the area. So I needed to park my car. So we, circ we had circled twice now. Now the whole time this is going on, I am praying, right? I am praying, Lord, please direct me. I don't know where I'm going. The GPS says I'm here, but then when I get here, there's no buses. And Lord, I don't wanna, I don't want her to be late. We are really cutting it close. So, you know, I was starting to get nervous too. Now, I remember seeing that at the parking, at the CIBC square, there was a big sign that said $30 to park underground. So I just said to myself, you know what? I'm just gonna park in there. And so, uh, this, is, so this is where the GPS says, we are here, so might as well just try and go down, down the parking garage. And so to be honest, we were going down the parking garage and I'm like, I don't know if we're in the right place, but I'm just gonna try to figure it out. So I, we start to drive down the parking space and there was a security guard there. And I said to her, I just need to park because I'm trying to find the bus terminal. Oh, she's like, yeah, you can just park over there. There's a sign that says 15 minutes for free. And then you can go down this way and go up and there's the bus terminal. And I said to her, oh great, thank you very much. It's free and also I'm in the right place, right? So anyways, we, that's what we did. And so we were really happy. So we rush, we park the car, we get the luggage, we go up, you have to go walk a bit, you have to go up some escalators. And then when you're on the second floor, I believe, there's all the bus terminals. You'll see all the buses, you see all the people. And so then we finally get to her terminal and I was very thankful and very happy, right? Because we had made it. And so, I prayed with her, I wished her well, she got on the bus, she went home, and that was great. The next day, my aunt called just to let us know she got there safe, and she said to me, I'm so sorry, I was scared, because she was getting nervous. I could tell she was getting nervous that we were not getting to the place, and she said, I thought we were gonna miss the bus, and I said to my aunt, I know, don't worry, it's okay, I'm so glad it worked out. I said to her on the phone, I was praying the whole time, you just didn't know, and she said, uh, I know you were, Tina, and that's why we didn't miss the bus, and so, so the truth is, the whole time, I was just as nervous as her. I was like, maybe we're gonna have to book this ticket the next day, she's not gonna make it. Anyways, I said, during that whole time, I said, Lord, please make a way for us to get to this bus terminal. And you know, there are some prayers we pray and God answers right away. And then there are others that will take time. There are others where we are waiting still for an answer. 
And while you're waiting for your breakthrough, you have to know you're gonna go through opposition, you're gonna go through challenges, and these oppositions or challenges will make us nervous, like I was, and will make us feel anxious. And we feel like we're unsure if we're going to get an answer. And so you will wonder sometimes, am I going to make it, Lord, because the situation is so hard and I've been praying so long for the situation. You know, how God is this going to turn out? But that is why you have to keep believing and you have to keep praying. And that is what this woman did in this story of Luke 18. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke 18. We're going to read the story about this woman, a widow who was persistent. The Bible says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see she will get justice so that she eventually will, she, so she won't eventually come and attack me. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they will get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? Let's pray together. Lord, this is your word. We pray right now for the Holy Spirit to come and to give us the understanding to give us the anointing, to give us the um, ears to hear, the heart to be open, and the eyes to see what God has to say to us today. Thank you for this parable. Thank you for the Bible that tells us the truth and tells us how to live. And thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this place. We pray all these things in the wonderful and powerful and magnificent name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So in this story, it's a parable. Jesus is telling a parable. And the reason he's telling the parable of don't, don't give up and to continue praying is because in the context of this passage of Luke 18, you will understand that Jesus is telling his people a lot of things. And then he's going he's gonna to say to them, you know, eventually I'm going to be coming back. And in the Bible and in, and in our Christian world, we understand that as the second coming of Jesus. And so Jesus says to them that while you are waiting for me to return, what posture should the Christian person have? What attitude should they have until Jesus returns? Well, Jesus then says we, how we should live and how our attitude needs to be is that we need to be a people who pray, right? We need to be a people who prays until the time Jesus returns. And so in order for his people to understand the, the posture of prayer, he tells them this parable. So in the parable, we have the widow, we have the judge, and the passage makes reference to God. And so the story says there's a widow who kept going to a judge. And uh, in those days, widows could be as young as 30. So we think of widows as maybe being 50, 60, 70. But the widows back then could be as young as 30. And the Bible says she kept going to the judge and she kept making a request and plea. And she asked the judge to grant her justice against her adversary. So this was a woman who represents someone who is helpless and is seeking justice. She is looking for money to be returned to her. So she goes to the judge. Now her behavior reminds us that she's a woman in need. And she makes the choice to go to the judge. And I wondered this morning, what kind of need might you have as you think about your life and as you think about the things you're praying about, what has been keeping you up at night? What has been on your mind? What have, has been weighing you down? Because right now, you might be consumed with worry and with trouble. And so this problem that you're thinking about, your, your need or the burden that you're carrying, you know, it goes through everywhere. In the morning, you're thinking about it. Lunchtime, you're thinking about it. Afternoon, then when you go to bed, you're still thinking about the situation. You are constantly burdened about this need. And you've been praying for a breakthrough for a while. 
And for each one of us, that's going to look different. There are some people who are struggling with their health. There are some people who are having challenges in their marriage. There are some people who are having problems with their parents or their siblings or their kids. For some people, it's going to work. Work is very stressful right now. Other people, it's money, legal issue, property issue, relationship issue. And then there are things that we're struggling personally, like habits that we don't like about ourselves. Could be an addiction or things like a temper problem or a jealousy issue. This woman had a need. I wonder, what is your need this morning? And when you're in a position where you have a need, what should you do? What should you do? Well, this woman went to the judge because he's the only one with the power and authority to help her. And that is what God wants us to do as well, to simply go to him with our needs. This is number one, go to God to handle your needs. And that's a very simple point, but we need to be reminded of, of it. This woman had a need and goes to the judge. Now, how are you trying to handle your problems this morning? Are you seeking God in this time? Are you praying over your needs? Because there's a lot of ways you can cope with your problems, right? Some people choose to worry about their problems. Some people will enter into anxiety over their situation. Other people will go into depression because of what they're dealing with. Other people will be angry over their problems. Then you can numb your pain through different things like substance abuse. There is uh, drugs, there is drinking, there are things like shopping, there's things like sexual sin. There are other people who wallow their pain into entertainment so that they don't have to think about their problems. And I find sometimes that the last person or the last resort we use to handle our problems is God. Is God, right? And so he should be the first one. Recently, last week, I was at uh, some friend function and I, I went to see some friends and then we were there talking about different things. And I, I listened to everybody as they were talking. Some people talked about the health problems they're having. Some people talked about the work problems they were having. Others, they have children, so they were talking about their parenting issues. So I listened to everybody as they shared their problems. And I heard somebody say, you know what? Uh, I went to this doctor and I did some tests. Have you tried this in terms of managing your children? And then they were talking about their work problems and how they were handling it. And so I am not against any medical help or parenting tips or work advice. I'm a very practical person. So you should get all the help you should get. You should read every book you can or read every article or whatever you need to do to get all the help you need. But there are some things that are not medical. And there are some things in your life that you're going through not because you did something wrong. There are some things that you're going through because they are spiritual. They are spiritual things that you are battling. And that means if you are battling something spiritual, you have to handle it in a spiritual way. The Bible says the enemy's job, Satan, is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's John 10.10. 10. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your children. He wants to destroy your health, your marriage, your kids. And so you just can't do physical things to see a breakthrough in your life when your battle is spiritual. If you're gonna break a spiritual battle in your life, you have to break it with spiritual weapons. And do you know what a spiritual weapon is? It's prayer, it's prayer, it's hope, it's faith, it's the Holy Spirit, it's the Word of God. Those are the spiritual weapons. This is what Ephesians talks about. It talks about the helmet, the breastplate, the, the shoes, the sword, and they're all symbolic of spiritual weapons in our life. And so, uh, as you think about your, your situation, and, and praying through it, because what, what you're battling is spiritual, that means another counseling session is not gonna help your marriage, another pill is not gonna help your health, and it's not count to 10 so your kids will calm down from their suffering or problems at school. It's get on your knees and pray. That's what it is. Get on your knees and pray for the situation that you're going through, because only God can help us. So are you, gonna, are you going to God to handle your needs and concerns? Because sometimes we go through everything in the book and the last person that we go to is God. And we forget that we are in the spiritual realm. We forget that we are fighting a spiritual battle until Jesus returns. And you're not gonna win your battle through a book. And you're not gonna win your battle through another article that you read. You're gonna win your battle if you're gonna pray and go to God, 
right? One of my colleagues from the United States texted me the other day. He texted me and this other pastor, we're all pastors. He wrote that he went to the doctor and they saw something and that they are, and that they're going to have to do surgery to do further tests. And he asked for prayer. Oh, why is he asking for prayer? Because he knows he needs prayer in this time. And so he did go through the procedure this week and then he wrote, thank you very much for praying. And I had wrote back and I said, of course, brother, we will, we will pray for you. So the Bible says this widow went to the judge and then it says that for some time he refused. But finally it says, the Bible says, the judge says, I don't fear God, I don't fear people, but because she keeps coming to me and bothering me, I'm gonna give her her justice because she's wearing me out. And this is number two, pray persistently, don't give up. The widow didn't just go to the judge one time. She went back two times. She went back three times. We don't even know how many times she went back. All we know is she just kept going back to the judge, right? The Bible says she kept coming with her plea. And the judge says, she's bothering me and wearing me out. And why was she going to him? Because he's the only one that can help her. That is why she keeps going to him. That's why we keep going to God. God is the only one that can help us. He's in the position of power and authority to grant her request. And I'm sure as she was going back to the judge over and over, she probably at times felt discouraged. She probably felt vulnerable. Maybe she felt even rejected at times, but she kept going back to him. Can you relate to the widow in the story? Have you ever prayed about something but still didn't get an answer? Now, is it because God didn't hear you the first time? The answer is no, he did hear us. But for some reason, your request was not granted the first time you prayed. And we will talk a little bit more about this at the end of the sermon as to how God answers prayers. So she keeps going back to the judge. Jesus is saying to all of us as well, pray and don't get weary. That's what the King James Version says. Pray and don't get faint. Keep praying. The judge says her persistence is wearing him out. The woman is bothering him. So this word bothering in the text actually means causing him trouble. And he is being worn out by her. The Greek expression used in the manuscript can refer to someone, gi someone giving someone a black eye. Okay. Now this is a boxing kind of term, and what is a black eye? A black eye is the appearance of bruising around your eyes. It's usually the result of trauma to the head or the face, which causes bleeding beneath the skin. And when the small blood vessels or capillaries beneath the skin break, blood leaks into the surrounding tissues, and that's why you see discoloration and bruising. So when you think about what she's doing, it's likened to the boxer giving another boxer a black eye. And some of you watch boxing, I don't, like wa I don't like boxing, but some of you like boxing, and so you've seen this probably before. And just like the boxer who needs to win and keeps punching their opponent to win, so it is with this woman. She keeps going back to the judge, so he ends up giving her what she wants because he's tired and worn out. And so have we been persistent with the Lord as well? Will we keep going back to God? Sometimes we feel alone. We feel rejected, we feel discouraged, but Jesus says we need to be like this woman and we need to go back and not give up. So my question to you is, how many times are you willing to go back to God until you see your breakthrough? How many times are you willing to go back to God before you see the change in your life? Have you gone to him two days, maybe four days? Maybe you prayed about it for a week, maybe one month, six months, maybe it's been a year. It's been three years. Are you willing to pray for five years, for 10 years, 20? How many times are you willing to go to God until you see a breakthrough in your health, until you see a breakthrough in your marriage, until you see a breakthrough with your kids, until you see a breakthrough in your finances, until you see a breakthrough in your country, in your neighborhood, for those who don't know Jesus and still haven't claimed him as Lord? How many times are you willing to go back to God? We think after one prayer or one year of praying, that's enough. And we do this because we live in this very fast-paced, convenient world. We live in a very fast-paced, microwave society. You, you put something in, you have 30 seconds, it's warm. You know, you have your cards, you put it on, and, and everything is very digital and ga has gadget. But that is not how it works. It could be years before you see a breakthrough in your life. 
and not just years, it could be generations. Think about the Israelites. They were in bondage to the Egyptians for over 400 years. That's four centuries before they saw a breakthrough. The same with Joseph. It's not centuries, but years. Joseph was in prison for 13 years. The woman who was bleeding, how long was she bleeding for? 12 years. What about the woman who had been bound by an evil spirit? 18 years. If it takes that long for people to be free and to see a breakthrough in their prayers and suffering, then what about us? Because sometimes we're just crying to God like, oh God, I prayed one year. How come you didn't, you didn't do a breakthrough? It's been five years. It could be a hundred years before you see the breakthrough. You may not even see the breakthrough until the, your children and great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Then you'll see the breakthrough. You just don't know, but you have to keep praying. You don't just stop praying. You have to keep going. And then God will answer. Because some of the stuff that we are involved in, the strongholds, we call them, or generational curses, these are strong. They're called stronghold for a reason. It has a strong hold on you. It has a strong hold on your marriage, your kids, your family. And that's why sometimes you go to the doctor, you go to the school, you go to these counseling sessions, nothing is working. Because we have to go to God, and then we will see the breakthrough. On Thursday this past week, I called four different people because I learned they were going through different things. One person had a knee surgery back in December. I called them and prayed with them. Two ladies had just lost their sister this past month, and I prayed with both of them, called them separately. And then I called the person who's having major surgery tomorrow and prayed with them. And why did I do that? Because everybody needs prayer, right? Nobody's life is perfect. Everybody needs prayer. Even when things are going good, we need to pray. Amen? That's why Paul says in the Bible, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing, which means always pray. Don't just stop praying because people need prayers. And so I pray with them because I want all of them to have healing. I want them to have breakthrough. And I want them to see, receive what they need from God. Well, in verse 2, the Bible says the judge does not care about God or people. And the Bible says that the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen people who cry out all day and night? Will he keep putting them uh, off? Now, we can draw a comparison here. The judge, the Bible says the, the judge did not care about God and he doesn't care about people. But in contrast, we have a heavenly father who cares about us. He wants to hear from us. He cares about us. And if the widow gets justice from a heartless judge in the story, how much more will God who loves us give us justice? So this is number three. God cares about you and what you're praying about. Sometimes you will feel like God does not care because you didn't get your answer the first time. But is that really true? Does God not care? Does that, is that really a reflection of God's character? The answer is no. Because we know in the Bible God cares about us. How do we know that God cares about us? He was willing to die on the cross for you and me. So we know he cares about us. And so unlike this judge, the judge does not care. He can't be bothered. And in your walk with God, you will feel sometimes you're sharing with people your heavy burden and they don't care either. And sometimes we've done that to people. They've called us and we didn't really show any sympathy or empathy because you know we're so busy with our life. And so you share your situation, but some people can't be bothered. And sometimes you feel like God does not care because he didn't answer. But are you mad at God because he didn't care? Or are you mad at God because he didn't answer and he didn't answer your way? There is a difference. Think about it. And do we have a right to be mad at him? Well, here's the truth today. God does care. But sometimes we believe the lie that he does not. And the, the reason we feel this way is because God didn't change the situation or God hasn't answered and you're still waiting. But let's learn how and when God answers. The Bible says in verse 6 again and 7, it says, And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he'll see they will get justice and quickly. So number four today is God will answer your prayer. Here's the truth today. God does answer our prayer. And the Bible says God will bring about justice for those who cry out to him. He's not going to put them off. 
but there are conditions to our prayer. And I'm going to give you about five conditions here. Okay, when we're praying, we have to understand a couple things. So letter A, here are the conditions. God will answer your prayer that is according to what's best for you. Okay, Matthew 7, 9 says, Jesus says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will he give him stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then know that you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So what is the Bible saying in this passage? Jesus is saying, so the Bible is saying that, he's saying a good dad will not trick his children. So if you're asking for bread and you're asking for fish, you're not going to give them a stone and you're not going to give them a snake. So Jesus is saying a responsible father is not tricking their children. And he says a responsible father will meet the needs of their family or meet the needs of their, of their kids. So this means that our father, who's our heavenly father, will also do the same thing. And there's a contrast because in that same passage, the Bible says, Humans, human fathers are evil, human parents are evil and do what is wrong. Well, how much more who our God is perfect will give us what is good and right. So we need to trust that, that God will give us what is best for us in our situation. God is not going to trick us. He's going to give you what you need. And he's not like humans who do evil, but he's going to give you what you need because he is good. Letter B, God will answer if you ask with right motive. This is really important today. James 4 says the following, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Then you spend what you get on your pleasure. So this is really key today. You have to think about why uh, the reason God might not be answering your prayer today is because you're asking with wrong motive. Why do you want what you want? Think about that. Why do you want what you want? Why do you want the big house? Why do you want the car? Why do you want to get married? Why do you want the job? Why do you want your business to flourish? You know, what is your motive? Motive is the why behind the what. Are you asking God with the right motive? Or are you asking with the wrong motive? Because our motive can be impure. If you want to get married just to show off, or you want that job because of the title, you want the big house to show off to your friends, and you want that degree to boast, that, those are not good reasons, and that could be the reason why God is not answering your prayer. Uh, so if you're asking with wrong motive, that is really key today. We need to ask God with the right motive. Lord, I want a car so I can take people to church. You know, I want this money so I can donate more to the kingdom of God. Um, I want this job so I can get, have my kids have like the best education for their life. You know, those are motives that are pure before God. James points out that when we ask with wrong motives, these are what we call selfish prayers. And God will not answer those prayers. Letter C, God will answer the prayer of faith. James 5 says the following, if anybody's sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray and anoint them with oil. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they'll be forgiven. So we have to remember that because we believe in God, we believe in faith. And we are a faithful people. And everything that we do is by faith. By faith, we believe we'll be healed. By faith, we believe that the ministry will grow or the church will grow. By faith, we are, are believing that God will fix our marriage or, or, or our children. And so if you don't have faith, don't bother going to God, right? I remember one pastor said, well, it, faith is like this. It's like going to Walmart without money. You know, how are you going to buy anything? So if you go to God without your faith, how is that going to move the heart of God? You have to believe. You have to believe that God can change your situation. You have to believe that God can move in the situation. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. We just have to have faith. We just have to believe. And the Bible says you just have to have faith as small as a mustard seed. And you can say to the mountain, move, and it will move. So do you have faith this morning? Because the word of God says here, and the prayer offered in faith, right, will make the sick person well. Not the prayer offered in doubt. Not the prayer offered, or, or I think God might do it. Not the prayer of, maybe one day the Lord will move. No, it says, offered in faith. Do you have faith this morning? Letter D, God will answer at the right time. 
So many times we're praying about something over and over, time is lapsing, and we're saying to God, Lord, I'm asking with the right motives. This is the desire of my heart, but nothing is happening. Well, this was the case for Elizabeth and Zechariah. As you know, the Bible said they had no children. This was the case with Hannah, who had no kids. But eventually, God did answer their prayers, but at his time. Right? So Elizabeth and Zechariah had their baby boy, John the Baptist, because he needed to come to be the forerunner of Jesus. And Hannah had a little boy named Samuel, who became a great prophet and priest of his time. And Samuel came at the right time because Israel was going through all this drama and moral decay and issues. So sometimes God is not answering because it's just not the time. And so you see, God has a time for everything. The Bible says a time to be born, a time to die, a time to have kids, a time to take that job, a time to, to write that book, the time to travel, the time to be parents, the time to, to get married. There's a time for everything under the sun. So will you trust the time of the Lord so the answer is not no it's just later it's just later and then letter E you need to persevere because there is a battle going on we've talked about this Daniel 10 is gonna be a great story about this you need to persevere because there's a spiritual battle going on in the spiritual realm so we just learned that we have to keep going back to God there are some battles that are harder there are some prayers that are harder than others for example break uh, praying for someone to be saved and or an addiction that you're going through and we need to pray and battle with the Lord because there's a battle going on and so the Bible tells us when Daniel got in Daniel chapter 10 Daniel got this revelation from God and he didn't understand the vision so the Bible says he prayed and he fasted to understand the vision and the angel came to him and said he would have come earlier, but he was detained by a prince. We're not talking about a physical man. We're talking about a spiritual prince. So here's what the Bible says in verse 13. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me, the angel said, 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. That's an angel because the angel says I was detained and there was there was with the king of Persia. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. For the vision concerns a time yet to come. So the angel is saying to Daniel, I would have come earlier, but there was a battle going on. And so he needed Michael, um, Michael's an angel in the Bible, to come and help him. And that's how they battled. And finally, the angel was able to talk to Daniel. So when we often think there's no Satan, there's no demons out there, they're not real, but guess what? They're really real. And they're doing a lot of damage right now in the world. There's a lot of evil going on. There's a lot of depravity going on. There's a lot of sickness going on and perversion, and it's all happening in the spiritual realm. So we know that it, if, if it's God's will for you to be healed, to provide for your family, to be saved, to be free from addiction, it might take longer. You just have to keep praying and battling it out. And letter F is, the answer is no, it's just not God's will. So there are some prayers. You're praying and the answer is no. And so there's examples of this in the Bible. When Jesus went to, to God, the Father, and said, take this cup from me, God said no. And when Paul had a thorn in his flesh and prayed three times for it to be removed, the answer was no. And David, when he sinned, he had uh, committed adultery and asked for his son to be spared from sickness, the answer was no. Why did God say no? Because there was a reason. Jesus had to die for the sins of the world, so the answer was no. Paul had to go through what he was going through because Paul understood that God was using the sickness to humble him. And then David committed adultery with Bathsheba, so God said this child is not going to be saved. So when God says no, there's a reason, and we have to accept the answer and trust God for what's next in life. Because remember, God knows what's best for us, right? So as we think about all the things today, I want you to think about your life right now. What are you praying about? And do you need to keep going back to God to ask for a breakthrough? A couple years ago, my uncle got sick and he contracted COVID and his health quickly deteriorated. I got the phone call from my cousin uh, or a text message to say, you know, my dad's in the hospital because of COVID. And so um, 
he had other health problems. So the fact when he got COVID, it just added to his problem. So I remember when we got the message, I, I said to my family, we need to pray. We need to pray. But not just pray individually. I, I, I asked if we could host on Thursdays prayer sessions so that we could pray for him. And that's what we did. So whoever was available on Thursday night, we would come together and we would pray. And so every week we had different people from the family come together and pray. And each week was different. One week he's getting better. The next week he has high fever. The next week he's got pneumonia. The next week he's, he's not doing well. And it was basically like a roller coaster. He can't breathe. He can't eat. He has fever. But we kept praying. We just kept praying. And surely but slowly, he began to get better. It was not easy, it was a rough situation, but he got moved out of his room and he was eventually taken off the ventilator. He had to get an oxygen machine because at times his breathing was unstable. But finally in the summer, because this all happened in March, April, finally in the summer that year, he was released to go home. And I'm happy to tell you, he's doing okay. He is now stable. And so, why did we see a breakthrough or why did God show him grace? I believe it's because of the prayers of the people. And so I am very thankful that we prayed and God showed him grace. I also know that there are many times we pray for somebody and sometimes they still don't make it. And we still have to say to God, you know what, Lord, I don't understand, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. But today, we've learned today that our prayers make a difference. God wants us to go to him. God wants us to persevere. God wants us to know he cares. And God wants to know that he will answer according to his will, according to his plan, according to his purpose. Amen? Let's pray together. Lord, as we've listened to the widow that went back to the judge, she just wouldn't give up. And this morning, I know there are some of us We've got tired of praying over the same thing. We got tired of praying over the situation. We are fatigued. We are weary. But the Bible talks about how we, we should not get weary. The Bible says we need to make the judge in the story get tired. And we need to go to God and persist in our prayers. So this, this, this afternoon, we, we pray. There are people in our families, our friends, who still don't know Jesus. We've talked to them about Jesus so many times. We've visited them. We've given them the gospel truth. But their hearts are hard. They're still not releasing. We pray in the name of Jesus that they will be, um, they, they, their hearts will change and that they will repent of their sins. We want to be like this day. We're not going to give up. There are people that are sick. And they've been battling their sickness for a long time. We continue to pray for them, Lord. We pray for healing. We pray that they will do all the things they have to do. Medical appointments, exercise, change their diet. But God, we pray for healing. And there are some people who are angry with their spouse or they're mad and, and they're angry with their kids or the kids are angry with their parents. God, we pray for healing. We pray that you will help your people. And Lord, we pray for our country. The time is getting closer to when Jesus returns. Things are getting harder. There are storms. There are famines. There is wars. There are challenges. Corruption at all level. Perversion, Lord. Many are saying wrong things are right and right things are wrong. This is the time we're living in. It does not make it easy for us. Is sometimes we feel like, Lord, it's so hard to be a Christian in this day. But Lord, it was hard for Daniel too. It was hard for all the different kings that oversaw Israel. It was hard for even Paul. And even in times, the times of Jesus, there was a lot of corruption, Lord. And so no matter what generation we live in, there will always be evil. Because we know Satan is always working. But we pray, Lord, this morning that we will not give up. We will still pray. We will rejoice in the Lord always, give thanks continually, and we will have a heart that it prays. This is our prayer this morning. So this morning, as we think about the petitions of our heart, our personal prayers, our family, our friends, Lord, we give them to you, and we know at the right time we will see the breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.